what's up youtube this is giant of up three here um so i'm just gonna make a video going over every feature on the randomizer kind of somewhat briefly but enough so that you have a good idea of what's going on um i will have time stamps in the description below uh, so that you can jump to wherever you want let's go ahead and start though because there's a bunch of features <laughs> so the general tab uh, this is where you select your ROM file. Please put it in the same folder as the randomizer. And if you just click on this, uh, just click on your um, uh, your file, and it should work. It should be a NTSC version 1.0. If there's an error, like it's not a version one, it will actually let you know. Here's a seed. If you don't click on anything, it'll give you a random seed. Otherwise, you can click on it or just type it in. As long as it's a number, positive number, not a decimal, and not using like any weird, weird characters. Um, settings code basically it will uh, generate a code for all the settings you have in all of your tabs except for the bk model and sounds because those are preferences and you can give this to a friend or a competitor and uh, they can supply the settings um let me go over the bottom tab before i go over this one so the bottom tab load configuration and basically you can load a preset or you can actually even save your own let's go ahead and uh you can save it like over here um there's a readme button, please read it. <laughs> and the submit button to actually submit your settings. So for randomly uh, select configurations, it'll just choose one of the configurations that you've already saved. And for randomly select every setting, it will randomly select every setting or set it to randomly select the setting. For the collectibles tab, uh, the, there are three main categories. There's uh, flagged objects, so this top one. Structs, which are these guys, and I'll explain the structs in a bit, and Jinjo's one of miscellaneous objects. So the flagged objects are basically, you collect this item, uh, whenever you leave the world and come back in, they will still be disappeared because they are flagged for being taken. Uh, uh, structs are uh, basically the uh, notes, eggs, feathers, so they're the collectibles. Um, they're usually 2D sprites, and no matter which way you look at them, um, they will always be facing you. Not necessarily always the case, but in this case it is. Um, Jinjo's one-ups and miscellaneous objects, basically they are 3D objects, you collect them, you leave the level, you go back in, and they reappear. Um, so you can shuffle most of these by world, so they'll be somewhere in the world within like the same category, um, or by game, so uh, they will be um, scattered all throughout the game, and uh, for Jiggy's uh, Empty Honeycombs and Mumbo Tokens, uh, it's a little weird, sometimes you'll get a Rusty Bucket Bay Jiggy in Mumbo's Mound, and it won't show up on your totals until you actually get to Rusty Bucket Bay. Abnormalities are just jiggies or uh, uh, empty honeycombs or whatever that are kind of weird. Um, they don't necessarily break the game, but they do either force you to like think in a certain way or like they have like some like weird um, trait that happens like once you collect it. Uh, Potential softlocks, these are the ones that could potentially break your game. So, for example, uh, Napper uh, is weird and how he works with, like, the Jiggy. Um, there's an empty honeycomb that can only be grabbed by the pumpkin. Those can all be shuffled with potential softlocks. Um, and uh, I don't recommend this feature, but it's there in case you do want 100% randomization. Door of Grunty only. So, this will make it so that if you click on it, all the worlds will automatically be open. And you can set how many Jiggies you need for the final Grunty door up to 99. The reason why it's 99 is because you need one Jiggy to get the double health. And I don't want to prevent someone from doing that in case the final battle is too hard. Uh, no floating Jiggies will just make it so that uh, uh, all the Jiggies that are like out in the open, like not from like a spawn event, uh, will be disappeared. And it'll force you guys to kind of like use the um, uh, little mini games and stuff um, just to get like a like a, like a uh, racing category more or less but uh, if you really wanted to just like not have like, any freebies you could just do that one instead uh, so for the health you can do normal health four health two health one health or zero health i do not recommend zero health it's unbeatable literally you attack something and you can die and if you pause uh, you lose a life um, but every other one has a possibility um, and if you click random health option it will not select zero health the token option is basically how many, uh, how much it costs for a transformation. Um, so uh, base game is base game cost, world order is based on the world order. So uh, for example, if Freezy Peak was the first world, uh, the Walrus would cost 5 instead of the normal, uh, what, 15? I think it's 15. And then there's also free transformation so that you can just transform whenever you want to. 
Uh, Notes X Feathers is a little more than just the world in the game. There's also randomized, so basically, uh, but depending on like the number of notes you have, it will generate that many notes, and then everything else will be random, like the Notes X and Feather counts. So not the, the X and Feather counts will be random, not the note count. And if you do that, you can uh, make it so that uh, the note counts cannot go over 127, which is like a weird number. If it does go over 127 um, from this feature, uh, and if you save and quit, it will roll over, so 128 becomes 1. Um, producing extra notes, or producing exactly enough notes, um, just depending on what, how you, you want to play it. Um, scaling note doors versus file note doors. So scaling note doors will make it so that, uh, like, if you make this uh, 100 for the, the final A10 node door, uh, all the node doors will scale accordingly, or you can just have that as file node door so that they're all just disappeared. Um, and the only door you care about is the file node door. For both the file node door and the uh, granted door only, if you click on random, it'll just put a question mark there. And it will randomly select the number um, for uh, based on your seed. Cheeto, you can go up to 255 for each one of these. Um, if you make it so that this number is smaller than the first number, uh, whenever you activate the Cheeto Sandcastle cheat, it will actually go down. <laughs> and it's kind of funny. So uh, heads up, you might want to make it so that you can still be Grantilda. Um, and you can also click on random so that they're all just question marks. For the Jinjos, 1-Ups, Miscellaneous, there are only options by world because, uh, as again, like whenever you leave and come back, uh, they will reappear and they don't save over so um there are abnormalities though there are some like for example in the grunt till the final battle um that are considered as like these kind of like abnormalities because like they respawn and stuff uh so you can include a shuffle those miscellaneous objects include stuff like uh congo's orange uh boulder's gold uh nam nuts acorns etc Starting life count, um, you can start however many lives you want, uh, up to 255. I think 69 is a funny number. <laughs> Warps. Um, so you can either have it you know, by default, or you have basic shuffle. Basic shuffle is the first world is guaranteed to be Mumbo's Mountain with Shock Jump Pad, Talon Trot, and uh, Beak Buster. And uh, those are the three moves you need to progress to get the entire layer. And then every other bottle's fill that, like, by, like, vanilla uh construction is uh uh randomized so for example the uh wonder wing ability in clinker's cavern can be any move besides those three mentioned uh mumbo's mountain um it could be like you know waiting boots it could be uh, uh flight etc um bottle shuffle however though basically uh depending on your shuffle it will uh Turn all the bottles hills into one ups, uh, shuffle all those you know gingers one ups whatever, and then it'll see which one which one of those are still one ups, and it'll try to calculate uh, uh, where a bottle could be based on like the moves you can learn since there, and uh, based on the jiggy requirement to progress the game. Uh, the entrance you uh entered from and the world you entered from so if you do it from the world you entered from if the first world uh where it's usually mumbo's mound if that's freezes the peak and you go in and you exit you will end up at the exit of freezes the peak but if you do the entrance one if the first world is um freezes the peak and you go and you come out you will come out as as the mad uh, so the mumbo's mound entrance uh, this is starting the game with all uh, all the moves. Uh, you also skip like a few like cutscenes and stuff. Um, but uh, that's it, it's all it's an all or nothing kind of thing for now. I'm still trying to figure out how to do this one. Uh, within world shuffle, you can either shuffle by world, so uh, uh, all the warps within the world will be shuffled. If it's a warp that has a requirement such as a uh, nipper, it will be in the overworld, not in a sub area, so that you don't get soft lock going into an area that you can't exit out of. Shuffle by game is not... <laughs> There's, like, no logic for it. It's just a meme. Uh, you can try it, but there might be crashes. Uh, there's, like, a disclaimer. I don't care to fix it. Um, at some point, I'll go back to it. Um, but it's just way too much. Um, but this will shuffle all the warps within all the worlds. Uh, starting area is basically where you start off from. So if you really want to start on uh, Treasure Truck Cove's main area, you can. And uh, you can skip the cutscenes. Uh, this will skip the intro cutscene and the um, uh, cutscene whenever you enter the lair. However, if you do click this button, 
and you were to die or to uh, save and quit, you will end up in Spiral Mountain. You will not end up like at the beginning of the lair. Enemies. So there's uh, default enemies, uh, shuffle enemies, and randomized. Uh, shuffle just makes up all the uh, grounds. Shuffle with the grounds, walls with walls, fl uh, flying with uh, flying within that world. And randomized will uh, randomly pick a ground enemy, a wall enemy, or a flying enemy. And you can also select which ones you want. You can remove all of them. If you do this, actually, it actually removes all the enemies from the game. So in case you really don't like enemies, there you go. Uh, Banjo Kazooie model. So you can actually uh, have use different presets, or you can even scroll up to say a C determined preset or C determined colors. Um, you can also save your presets uh, in case you have a specific color combination you want. And if you want to calculate this, for example, FFFFFF, which is uh, white, um, and you uh, you want to create a RGB 16 color, you just click on that and it'll automatically transfer it over. Or it'll, it'll try its best to. Um, it's not exactly perfect. Moving on, uh, there are sounds. Uh, you have the normal sounds, uh, sorry, the short sounds, the jiggies and fan uh, jingles and fanfare, and the music. Short sounds are like note sounds, like like you touch them, like it makes like a sound for like half a second. Jingles are like sounds that like last a few seconds, and musical sounds that last like a very long time. Uh, they either loop continuously or like they'll eventually stop, but like it's like long enough so that you're like okay, um, so. Jarring sounds are sounds that like are annoying or like hurt people's ears, um, or if they shuffle with something else on accident, they might loop forever and it gets kind of annoying. Um, so you can always just say select non-jarring sounds and it'll select this tab and not this tab. Uh, jingles fanfare, uh, I've already gone over basically this, but there's no subcategories because they're all kind of like the same and they're fine. Uh, music has like different uh, sections. You know, some of the special ones, like for example, uh, the King Sandy Buds Tomb. Uh, that one does not loop, so it'll sit, play the music, then it'll just stop. Um, and then uh, sometimes uh, you will go into like uh, Mumba's Mound uh, with like the Boggy Igloo music, but there's no subcategory, there's no sub channel of the um, Boggy Igloo music. So when you go next to Juju, the music will just stop. Heads up. <laughs> Map configuration is models, animations, and properties. Uh, basically, you can swap around the models. Some of them are self-explanatory. Some of them are like vague-ish enough so that uh, whenever you try it out, you'll be like, whoa, that's a thing. And then uh, the only properties feature I have right now is Gamble Beehive. Basically, you touch the beehive and you'll get a random amount of health. You can also click on uh, random customs. So whenever you start the game, you'll see like you'll get a random uh, custom stuff where you can say all aesthetics and uncheck all. World specific stuff for uh, Gruntilda's Lair, you can skip for this one if you really want to, and because uh, you don't have to answer all those questions, there is enough room to uh, make Gruntilda hints. So you can do the base game where she just says like um, her favorite toilet is like this one or whatever, right? Um, big hints are like you, there are this many moves in this world, and detailed hints are um, you will get eggs and flight in this world. The transformation, so basically you go to a certain point, Mumbo's like, you can't go that far, or else it'll be transform. Uh, this will remove those barriers, so you can go around the entire place as a B if you really want to. A final battle, uh, if you click on zero, it's the default, otherwise any one, two, and three will make it so that um, you have these three options. What floor uh, changes the collision of the floor to zero, so like you just go through the floor, and it'll put jump pads so you can jump on top of those. Mini-Me will make her smaller, and Monster House will put enemies on the area. Um, and the difficulty you do will determine how much there is. So, for example, for what floor, if you make it level 3, you'll remove more um, jump pads. If you do mini-me, higher difficulty is she's smaller. Monster House, there are more enemies. For Mumbo's Mountain, you can also randomize the uh, flowers, including with all the uh, notes, eggs, and feathers. For Treasure Truck Cove, uh, people ask for a random XYZ location, so I made it semi-random. Uh, and you can have a low scatter where you can just kind of jump to reach them, or a high scatter where you might have to fly to reach them. Super Slippery Sand is uh, you can't change your direction. Basically, when you're on the floor, um, you have to jump to, or fly or whatever to uh, move around. If you do get caught with um, like the gold in your hand and you're next to uh, uh, Blubber, you will have to wait for him to come by because you can't jump uh, around him with the gold for some reason. 
Clinker's Cavern, you can shuffle the rings that are inside Clinker. Bubble Goop Swamp, you can shuffle the Crocus Order, uh, which are those yellow crocodile guys that want eggs. Uh, you can make Mr. Vile bigger, and you can make the Tip Tap Choir um, randomly uh, over the area. Um, they will be underground, so you can't really see their colors, uh, but you can still see their heads. Um, and one of them might be off screen, that is intentional. For Freeze of the Peak, you can make the race harder. Uh, the flags will either be turned, scrunched up, uh, or just lowered so they're a little harder to see. For Gobi's Valley, um, you can shuffle the Ancient One's Order, which are usually already random, except for the first one's not random, but so now this randomizes that one. Uh, Jinxie Head, so this is for the um, uh, King Sandy, but Maze, to raise it up, you need to shoot eggs into these guys and it just randomizes that order. For Matching Puzzle, it uh, determines different um, matching pairs based on the colors. If you are colorblind, I am so sorry. I do have a cheat sheet uh, if you do want to do this option with your friends. Uh, but if you just uncheck it as well, um, you also have the same seat as your friends. I'm sorry about that. For uh, Mad Monster Mansion, uh, the pots are randomized with the um, uh, fire paint object. So the uh, fire has two parts. It has the 2D spray and it has the paint object, which is like the smoke. Um, and uh, the uh, flower pots that are usually in the graveyard will be somewhere where those um, uh, fire paint objects would normally be. So if you go to Mumbo's hut, uh, you'll see the fire. You might see a pot there. Um, and you'll have to shoot eggs in there somehow. Uh, for a randomized bot and song, uh, he just uh, plays a song. It just randomizes what the combination is. Same for Rusty Bucket Bay. You change whatever the um, 3, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1 combination would be. For Click Clock Wood, if you say shuffle by season and uh, you have it like shuffle like within the world, um, it will like have like, the same note counts in each season, for example. It'll have uh, 16 in the spring, 16 in the summer, 48 in fall, 16 in winter, and 4 in the lobby. Um, but if you uh, make the collectibles shuffle by game, or you say um, uh, shuffle within world, uh, it'll all get mixed up. Like with between all the seasons. Open seasons is basically removing all the uh, doors on the uh, seasons so that they're not blocked off by Beak Buster. Um, and so like there's, uh, with Bottle Shuffle, there's like more possibilities for where to go, uh, but also you're not forced to go a specific path just to open up all the uh, seasons. For Miscellaneous, uh, removing extra files, basically if you're a game dev and you want to look at the files like themselves, like when they're extracted, uh, you can uncheck this. Otherwise, I recommend it checked. And tooltips, if you have a hover burn tilde, she will tell you uh, what each feature does. Um, uh, but if you're watching this video, you basically got an overview anyway. And then whenever you're done, just go ahead and say submit, and a mumbo will pop up. And uh, he will go through the entire process. Uh, if he does error, he'll tell you there's an error. Read the readme, and the readme will probably say something like message me. <laughs> so um hopefully that answered a lot of your guys's questions uh i do have a discord if you guys have any more questions or need support um i hope you enjoy the randomizer and have a good day